consider the following minimal API application. All it does is take the root path and calls this method called generate and select a barry. This method creates a new barry generator and calls the method generate barries. Generates a list of one billion strings of barry and a random GUID. It then selects a random one from that list and returns it to the method here. Then we print out the selected barry and the current memory of both the managed memory and the total memory of the process. Look what happens. So you can see here on the right, we've boosted up to 2.2 gigabytes of memory used. And there is still 1.6 gigabytes of managed memory used, which is strange because there are no references left to the 1 billion barriers. I know what you're thinking. It hasn't garbage collected it. Well, let's see what happens when you do. If we uh, decide to be very naughty and do a GC collect and run the application, you can still see here on the right that we're pumping up to 2.2 gigabytes of RAM, but we've saved a little bit. And now we've run the garbage collector, we only have one megabyte of managed memory used by the program, but two gigabytes used by the entire process. But that means there's two gigabytes of wasted memory here. We can see this in the task manager. If we sort by memory, we can see that our program is using two gigs of RAM. But why? Well, there is a way around this. What if I told you there was a different garbage collector you could use called the workstation garbage collector? If you set this environment variable called .NET GC server, the default value for .NET Core and .NET 6 web applications is one, which is a server garbage collector. If we set this to zero and hit save, if we run the program again, let's take a look and see what happens. This time with the workstation garbage collector. We're pumping our memory up, but then if we can see on the right here, immediately our memory has dropped and it's run the garbage collector itself a lot of times while creating this list. And now we're only using 86 megabytes of RAM for the entire process. The question you're probably asking yourself is, should I do this with my programs? And the answer is no, you should not. For the server garbage collector, what happens is that after a garbage collection, it doesn't give the memory back to the operating system immediately, just in case it needs it again. It's actually faster to keep hold of the memory and use as much as possible than it is to keep asking the operating system for more. As you can see here, if you keep refreshing this page, the total process memory usage stays stable. However, with the workstation garbage collector, if you keep refreshing the page, you can see that the memory usage of the process goes up and down. This is not great for overall performance. There is a small use case for this, and this is if you're running your application in an extremely memory constrained environment, such as a Docker container. In fact, if your server only has one processor, the workstation garbage collector mode will be the default. To change to workstation mode, you need to set either this environment variable or you can change some value in runtimeconfig.json. To find out more about these two different types of garbage collectors, read the Microsoft documentation, link is in the description. If you found that useful, don't forget to either like or subscribe to the channel. Cheers.